Uh, no intro? Yeah, there's no intro. Start talking, and then, uh, you know, when I say something hilarious, that's when I start the podcast. Okay, nice. <laughs> now, and I'm going to get some SM58s because I want to start interviewing, like, people when they come in. Anytime you guys get a joke off, if I don't really like it or if it makes me look dumb or, you know, anything, cut it right out. If you guys say something racist, then I'll turn the volume up on your mic a little bit. Le- <laughs> leave it in. That's yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, it was at an open mic in Chicago, and I had a joke about having really big balls. Have you heard? I don't think I've... I don't really do this joke, joke anymore. You told me. Okay. Yeah. If I already told you the booze story? <laughs> no. Okay. But yeah, just that my ball... You know, this is uh, this is a stretching the truth, but <laughs> that my balls are so heavy. I don't. I don't think it's stretching the truth. That my favorite thing about I really want to go to space. I would love to go to outer space because there's zero gravity. So then my balls would get a break. They would get to float through the air, a- as if they were being held by like soft cherubic angelic hands, like in the paintings. Uh-huh. But they just didn't like that. I said I said soft child, you know, like soft baby hands. On my, oh yeah, yeah that's and rude, yeah. and so yeah, three or four. I, it wasn't the entire audience. No one was on my side, and but for good reason. I mean, I learned to those, stop telling that joke. Those, but, they were former convicts. <laughs> those anti-pedophile crowds are tough. No, that they, they were former. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I run into them They're all the time. Tough. Yeah, and uh, it's really been a tough part of my career. Yeah, is dealing with the anti-pedo crowds. Sorry, that's a good point. No, that's, crowds. Yeah. yeah, the so um yeah. that's a standing home at Epstein's Island at least. Yes. And <laughs> any local subway. Yeah. Yeah, I try I my think best. Bill Clinton would sponsor your next <laughs> escort. But yeah, so that's that's my boo story, but it's good to hear that you guys are both staying busy on the weekends talking to old people. How is the 23-year-old? Did he save you? The one young guy? He was he was great. No, he was very very polite and very nice, and he was like... Did you guys kiss? I wish. I mean, he was a handsome guy. That's it? Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I wish we would have. <laughs> no, but he was nice. But that was like... Because I was doing bits about, like, obviously, like, my my girlfriend bit and then my astrology bit are, like, from my my view of, like, what dating is, like, younger women. And it's, like, it's just interesting to have another young guy and he was able to relate to everything and i would like bring him in like ask him questions it was good though no it was it was cool i thought the, cr- the crowd work is fun I-, I actually like doing crowd work because it like it forces me to get out of my act a little bit and be a person instead of just going through like instead of your natural state of robot yeah <laughs> no, actually, it's it yeah <laughs> so yeah no but yeah no it gets you out of your act so mm-hmm. Yeah, no, crowd work is the one time when we can become people, act like humans, but yeah. I get it. Sounds good. I was in the Great North, the Great North. I was in Minnesota and North Dakota this past weekend. Okay. Yeah. Is it a, a, a H-E-R show? Yes. Well, yeah, it was some brewery shows. That it was fine. Guy. I sat next to a, a five-year-old on the plane there, and then, so she took up almost no space, and she was super well-behaved, couldn't have been better. Where'd you fly? Uh, Allegiant. Okay, That's not good. not terrible. It's a budget airline, but they yeah. go from small city to small city. They keep the planes clean. The people are well behaved. Can't complain too much. <laughs> so <laughs> I like it. And then on the way back, I sat next to a giant fifty-five year old, and uh, took so up a lot of space. he took up a lot of space. And yeah, so that wasn't great. But I will say on the on the flight back. The stewardesses, uh, it was kind of classic, you know, like I'm about to be a happily married man. So, of course, I wasn't looking very much, but there was there were two young, healthy ladies and, uh, you know, one blonde, one brunette. And the guy next to me was looking at them a lot. You know, I could notice that he was, (laughs) but they were bringing the drinks down and he was so excited for them to offer him a drink. But then as they were coming from the front of the plane, the B team was coming from the back of the plane. And it was just some normal guy and kind of this middle-aged lady. And so when they came up, he was like looking and expecting the the A team to come down and offer him a drink. And then we were kind of right in the middle. So just as he was about to get his his wish, the B team came up and he kind of flinched. (laughs) And he was so disappointed. So uh, then it was back to reality and not back to the, I don't know, 70s or whenever. You know, I know. I... 
I didn't like him because of how big he was, but I, I sort of fell for him in, in that moment. But yeah, I got bullied by teens in North Dakota. That happened at a what mall. There? I went to, do you guys know Roger Maris? Yes. Negative. Yeah. Like the, like the founding father. Close. <laughs> is that your, really, is that your guess? Didn't no. He, didn't he found, found a religion? I think you might be thinking of um, Roger Morris. Is that yeah, what like, you said? That's who he's thinking of. Yeah. Okay. What did you say Roger Maris? Oh ro- no! I, okay, he was a rock <laughs> rock star, right? No, but I would love to hear you is continue he a to fat guess. Guy? No, he's Roger not a fat Maris guy. Is an author. I thought he was a fat guy. He's not an Roger author Eber. either. Yes, he is, yeah. dude. He might be. So Maris, the Roger Maris I'm talking about, he's from North Dakota. He broke Babe Ruth's single season oh home God, run record. Home run record. Yeah, 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 I knew that. He's a ball player. Yes, he's a ball player. Nice. He and I had a, a ball signed by him. Really? I did. Yeah, I did. I swear to God, I did. I believe it's you. Kind of gross, yeah. man. That I had a ball signed by him. Oh, I thought you said you had your balls signed. Uh, my bad. No, he's dead. <laughs> oh, he is Sharpies dead didn't now. Exist when he was out. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But no, yeah, so no he Sharpies. and he and Mickey Mantle, they both were chasing Babe Ruth's home run record in 1961, mm-hmm. and this is all a part of a great Billy Crystal movie called 61. Roger Maris is a Yankee legend. He's a Yankee legend yeah. and a North Dakota legend because he's from Fargo. Anyway, there is a museum uh, for him in a mall in North Dakota. It's very cool. It has his 59th, it has his 60th home run, not the 59th or the 61, because 60 was the record, but he hit 61 to break okay. Babe, Ruth, Babe for, Ruth's record. For one single season? For one single season. That's so many home runs, dude. That's nice that you he, he, think that. He, I yeah, agree. That's like yeah. one. That's like one every three games. He's also yeah, in yeah. much better shape than Babe Ruth. Well, you got to think that was before what black people and steroids. I think <laughs> black people were playing. They were playing. Yeah. It oh, was were. before steroids. <laughs> well, just before steroids. So it was then. a sweet spot. It was My, when it was hard, but you couldn't cheat. So you no. That's a that's a totally fair point. <laughs> I, thought was, I thought it was before everything. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. So. It was. It, it, you're right, though. It was kind of in the Whoopsie. exact spot. No, you're right. Where they let everyone play, so the competition was high, but you couldn't uh, performance enhance and hit yeah. more bombs. So his record stood, I believe, until Mark McGuire, okay. who played for the Cardinals. Yes, the Cardinals. Yes. Okay. And he also was a steroid legend. He was a steroid legend. I thought he was clean. <laughs> no. Nope. But we'll get to the, what, ha- what happened in the mall. I was so happy to be there. I discovered that, it, that the museum existed um, with just enough time to go there for 10 or 15 minutes. And then as I was enjoying this tiny, it's a very small museum, like I said, right in the middle of a mall. Some teens, uh, they walked past me and said, nice perm. Wow. That was it? They didn't say another expletive That's, after? No, nope, they did. <laughs> That's what I was in, expecting. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice perm. They just literally... That's all he said. Yeah. And then I laughed because I appreciate a, a good-natured yeah. rib. And then oh, no. the guy said, uh, you know, just joking, man. <laughs> but yeah, it was nice to interact with 15-year-olds like that in a mall. I would have said, nice lifestyle. You live in North Dakota. Now, listen, Loser. I love I love the people. <laughs> I love the planes. But yeah, so that was, that was a part of my No, but at that weekend. point, you have to throw it all aside. And you have to stand up for yourself. I have to trash Fargo and North Dakota. You have to Dakota. put a 15-year-old in the dirt. You got to head kick that 15-year-old and watch the blood gush verbally. out of his nose. All right, well, he made it physical. I was talking verbally. No, yeah. I mean, you got to watch the soul leave their body after you kick them in the skull. No, I, I took my lumps, but uh, that's no? that's okay. another way to handle it. I By the so. way, we have two <laughs> athletes. We got a Mr. Jiu-Jitsu over uh, here. You don't have to bring that up. And uh, D1, former D1 athlete. Yeah, fighting other men is definitely athletic. Yeah. I do think, like, uh, how would you rate your coordination? Because my th- quick theory, while you think about I that. I played ball for a bunch of years, so. Which ball? Baseball. Oh, did you? Okay, so, like, awesome. hand eye is good. Okay, sounds good. Because I would think that <clears throat> if you could do the ball sports, you wouldn't try to bash other men's heads in. But if you don't have much coordination, but you still want to, you know what I mean? No, no, I think uh, yeah, you don't really bash. I men's. think if you play in the NFL, you do both. Well, yeah, you don't. True, but there are graceful positions like wide receiver or quarterback or defensive really, back or wide beater. In jujitsu, yeah. you don't really bash men's heads in. You just sixty nine them. 
That's true. The yeah. jujitsu is more about controlling your opponent than beating him to death, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's different like, from it's UFC like in that way. Yeah, yeah don't get Just me started. I want to point out, I don't think beating someone to death is any part of any sport. Yeah. I think it's actually a crime and one of the worst things you can do. You know, you caught me. <laughs> there was a flaw in my what my thinking. But yeah, in UFC, it gets sort close to that. that. Habib should be in jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. you, you're you trying to knock out your opponent, right? I mean, that's... I mean, yeah. yeah. You're tr- Are you trying to knock them out or are you trying to win the fight? Subdue them, yeah. It's one and the same. No, but I, but you want to win the fight, but a knockout is a way to do that. If yes. you weren't going to win by knocking them out, you, no one would want to do that. I'd hope not, but... Uh, if you got disqualified, no one would knock, knock you out. Yeah, yeah. No, listen, you're right. Anyway, just call me a NARP. That's what you want to say. <laughs> this, do you know no. what NARP is? Huh? Non-athletic, uh, a non-athletic regular person. That's, what, NARP. that's what the D1 athletes called us when we were no, trying to study. That's uh, what frat people and non-athletes called themselves. I've never heard that phrase. No athlete called life. anyone a NARP yeah. in any real time ever because that's A1, the lamest nickname of all time. And B, athletes don't talk to normal people. We have things we need to do. <laughs> yeah, We're better than you. I was going to say that maybe... maybe <laughs> I've never heard in my life. Maybe yeah. I was betraying my insecurity. Yeah, you don't have an elite status where you get to meet those people. That's right. No, I'm just kidding. No, you're not. We played the same amount of time. But so. here's my question. So you were on a D1 roster, right? Yeah. I also, as much shit as I give myself, I started three games. Okay. Hey, yeah. I started probably three games on my eighth grade A team. I was normally a B team guy on the basketball floor. I was pretty good at other sports. We don't have to talk about it, but I did. I got to start like three three games for the A team. So I get what Let's I get say how it, it at feels. The same time, ready? But Please. who's counting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my question is me. this. Yeah. So do you think if I worked as and maybe you can answer for Nate as well, but if I worked as hard as I possibly could, okay, yeah. at becoming, at making a D1 roster, okay, okay. now a little bit about me, uh, second team All-State baseball player okay, in nice. small town Iowa, Yeah, state champion that's a football baseball player. That's baseball state though, isn't it? There's a great movie called The Final Season. That's It's a bit of a baseball state. I will say that. Did you ever play at Cooperstown? No, that's in New York. But the, are you No, think- but you could still go. Ah, no. If I, you're good enough. Did you play? At Cooperstown, yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. So you can answer it for Nate too. Okay. Do you think if we put all of our attention and effort into becoming to making a D one basketball roster at our respective heights, do you think zero chance or a non zero chance that we could make a D one roster? How tall are you? Five ten and a half. And if I had some like Ron DeSantis boots, maybe six one. Okay, that's that's definitely a Tinder lie you formulated, but I'm glad your wife bit on it. <laughs> no, I have um, five ten and a half. Yeah, no, but the boots part. So, okay, so you're further you're five, proof. I'm, not, I'm taller than 5'10". Five, 5'10 ten. Five, ten and a half. So in basketball <laughs> shoes, you would basically be pushing six feet. Okay. I like and where this is you, going. And are you, <laughs> are you fast, though? I, I'm not slow. I'm not that fast. I think what I would make up no, for... You can do it. Because here's the thing. What? If, you oh. were, <laughs> if you were six feet, were you just pointing at his nip? What no, are you doing? just pointing at oh, his skin. Tears? Oh, tears. His skin pigment? I don't know if you've noticed. Oh. Oh, the skin. Yeah. 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 No, surprisingly in Iowa, that doesn't matter. Yeah. But let me tell you. <laughs> if Actually, I think it works against you in Iowa. Perhaps. You have to have Fritz's color. You got to have the fundamentals. Iowa's team is the only team in D1 history full of walk-ons. But let me, t- <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you this. That's oh, and Wisconsin. That's the way you say it. Yeah, but also, <laughs> <laughs> if you were six feet tall, you would have minimum height, I think, to play. But you'd have to be really fast, and you'd have to uh, have a compact core. But the speed is more important than anything else because the other you would be guarding people that are taller than you. So you'd have to be quicker than them. However, this is the one loophole that I, f- I will f- go down. I will die on this hill. Okay. If you are automatic and you can shoot over 55%, no matter how athletic you are and no matter who's guarding you, if your rate of making shots was 55%, you could play at any level. I don't care if you have man boobs and you sprain your ankle every single time you go down the court. If you can make 55% of your shots, like doesn't matter where you are, you just throw it in the air and it goes in over half the time. Yeah, you can play. Okay, good to know. I, I- could see that. Yeah, I could see that. For yourself. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> no, Nate. Nate's. Uh, Nate would have to have like a forty-inch vertical. 
and yeah. the same things that I told you because he's a little shorter than you, I think. I like to hold on Opposite. to the fact that I yeah. could have played if I really wanted to. Well, I think that's if you the made delusion. Five percent of your shots, you would be right. Yeah, so I'd have to have a great shot, and I'll tell you now, I was more of a passer. I was more of a distributor, and then a really good, like, really ho- a lot of effort on defense. I'm just barely taller than Fritz. You are? Yeah. You're five eleven. Yeah. Oh shit! Well, no, All we've right. stood next to each other like times, and we've compared. I think we have gone back to back. I don't know yeah. why we did that. Wait, why did I think you were five nine and a half? I don't know. Well, you're wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. All right. Yeah. So in basketball shoes. All right. Well, never mind. Same thing applies. Yeah. 55% of your shots. And I'm actually. I, six I will five. say this. One yeah. thing that you that you could get away with at six feet tall is if you were scrappy on defense mm-hmm. and you had another guard on your team who was an NBA player, then yeah, you could just give the ball to him. And mind you, how many? There are probably 115 D1 schools, something like that. No, there's 300. There might be 400 now. But does that include one double A? Yeah. Okay. If we include them, then my delusion really... I don't know anything about basketball, so... Yeah, I just like to think that, you know, it's cute that you actually tried so hard and played D1 basketball. I mean, like, I'm happy for you, but, you know, if I had... You jealousy. (laughs) But... uh, It stinks. But, yeah, I I like to think that I probably could have made a a roster if, if I'd really... What's the core thing? Why'd you bring that up? Well, because you're like, you're, you have to have, you're going to be going against stronger, faster people at every position. Hear how he's so, shitting on me? No, yeah. <laughs> I didn't shit on you. Your parents should have been taller. There's a huge difference in what's happening here. Yeah, yeah, stronger, faster. Look, you want to play in the WNBA? It's a great song. This is a way different conversation. Mm-hmm. You still need the ability to shoot and have core strength, but you would be one of the best players. No you'd be a point guard at six feet tall, you'd be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I could compete. I could compete. Um, I still, I really don't think I would make the WNBA, and I'm not trying to be woke here, but I think I could make a girls D1 roster. But I do think I would have to put in way more effort than I did. I would have had to work really hard. Yeah, you'd have to change your name to Leah Thomas. You'd have to also be able to... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's an effort that I'm not willing to put in, but yeah. <laughs> There's legal problems you have to jump over. For sure. Now, Nate, you could probably beat the hell out of me. Uh, Don't you think? Yeah, but... Uh, Do you think you could beat the hell out of Trevor, even though he has... Uh, I don't know. Don't, why, why are you trying to pin us I I'm not. I, I just am trying to talk about athleticism. I could take him down, but I don't know if I could keep him down. Okay. Nate could snap my leg in half because I'm super inflexible and he's got all the leg kicks in his book. Okay, gotcha. But he wouldn't do it because I have Jewish lawyers. Uh-huh. <laughs> it can protect you? That's yes. my... F- we could Damn also it. have Jewish lawyers. I have a Jewish lawyer. Yeah, but you're lawyer. fucked. Yeah. I have a whole... I have a whole... I actually do have a Jewish tree lawyer. tree of issues for you guys. <laughs> he does have a whole Jewish family, yeah. Which is good for you. Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the pod, by the way. First, uh, first Jew on the uh, number one Florida yeah, comedy podcast. You want this to go <laughs> I have a Jewish account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get one to manage it. We'll <clears throat> see. Um, Fritz. Yeah. Let me ask you. Um, is this so? Did you tell your parents about the whole jail thing? Oh yeah. What did they say? My dad very kindly said that Fritz robbed a Target. By the way. Yeah, and they arrested me in blackface. Somehow. That was that was the crime. <laughs> that was what he got arrested for was the blackface. The robbery, they're like, "Yeah, whatever." That yeah, it says. <laughs> um, but yeah, after I removed my makeup, Sorry to my leak. dad, Sorry no, to you're good. That, that I know I was trying to keep that under wraps. It wasn't in the mugshot, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, my dad very cutely said that if he had been there, that they would have had to arrest both of us. Oh, isn't that's that nice? That's, that's beautiful. That's a, it's a good that's line, a isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And then my that's mommy, a thing. you were like, "Why you didn't get your license either?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mommy said that she couldn't sleep that night because she was so upset. Oh my god! <laughs> they both, everyone who hears the story, with the exception of like one guy, they all think you know it's crazy and uh, nothing but sympathy. Were you thinking they might have been upset? Well, I was just wondering, like. You know, 
they think that they just raised a sweet little Iowa boy and he's now a convict on different watch lists. I'm in the bloods. Yeah. yeah I'm not a convict. Huh? So I, I was Fred, this is a mindset. You are a convict. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I've yeah. been to jail and I will say, even though I was only there for 12 hours, I did join the, uh, you know, the Aryan gang right away. It just had to be safe. Oh my yeah. Gosh. <laughs> had, to, had to be safe. This is my last podcast. No, it'll be, it'll be fine. We'll cut it, but yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was their reaction. At most, yeah, mom was really the only one who was like upset. Most other people just laugh. Your woman loves funny. you more now, dude. She was the MVP. She was up all night trying to get together the bail money. Now um, she's got a good boy and a bad boy. Yeah, all in. But you one gave of her his. a real good story, you know. Yeah, like to tell her friends. Yeah. For, like, oh my God, Fritz went to jail. They're going to be like, what? Yeah. But like I said, she was pretty traumatized. I mean, she was crying a lot. But yes, it is a good story and uh, got a nice, a cute little mug out of it. I do think nice. I'm in a somewhat unique position where I have a mug shop, but I have zero shame whatsoever about it. Because I don't feel like I did anything wrong. Like, even if you just get a DUI or a public intox, I think there's still a touch of shame. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were yeah. out of your mind. Like, this yeah. is like not, this isn't really You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Besides the blackface, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know what you should do though? You should definitely make a bit about this and then you should definitely put your mugshot on a coffee mug and sell. Make mugs. merch. Yeah. Yeah. Or honestly, what I would probably do is just print out like a, a little square. Yeah. And then I could offer to sign it for people afterwards. That could be cool too. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Just cause the mug, then you have to carry it around. That's the whole thing about merch is just like traveling with it. Or just bring the orange suit and do a meet and greet and (laughs) sign every picture in Polaroid. Yeah. They don't let you keep the orange suit. They, they offer to let you buy it for 80 bucks. Are you joking? They no, oh. they don't. Oh my they, don't. God. they do. They charge you. This I think I mentioned will this. do anything for money. I have a green version of it. A green version of what? Oh, uh, like a jumpsuit. Really? What for? Well, I was going to fly. So yeah, I have oh one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like a Top Gun? Yeah. Nice. Well, no, I'm saving it because I will wear it. Uh, I will wear it to performances eventually. Gotcha. Okay. What do you mean? Like you'll do stand up in it? Yeah. Okay. Taking inspiration from old Dave, you know? Dave who? Chappelle. Oh my gosh, he you're right. He does stones, do that. Yeah. yeah, he has that giant Well, that and also, like, I did get kicked out, so. That was the closest thing that's ever happened to me to, to that. To an arrest my is getting kicked out of the My whole family fucking reprimanded me for that. They were pissed. Yeah, I mean, you, I don't know, I wouldn't say you did anything wrong, but. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean. I mean, technically speaking, he, he did speak the truth. Yeah, I suppose so. Sounds good. What's the closest you've been to getting arrested or getting in trouble with the law? Mm, well, <laughs> well, actually, this is a pretty wild turn of events. I had a fake ID when I was in college. And when I went home for the summer, when I was doing summer workouts, I accidentally left my wallet on top of my car and drove to the to the gym. And then I realized, like, after my workout, I was talking to my basketball coach. I'm like, I don't know where my wallet is. And I was like how did I even get here? I don't even know where my phone is. Mind you, I'm the most directionally challenged person maybe of all time. So the fact that I even got there was a, was a miracle on its own. Cause wait, you didn't have your GPS like on your phone. Had no GPS, but I had been going to this gym the whole time, but it it doesn't stop me from getting lost. But for some some reason I must've just been like, whatever, it's probably in the car somewhere I'm driving. So turns out I drive back home cause I'm like, I don't know where my phone and my wallet is. I go on my computer on the find my iPhone thing. It ends up being three and a half miles away from my house. So my phone and my wallet stayed on top of the car for three and a half miles. Oh, wow. I go where, where it says on the location, get my phone, but my wallet's nowhere to be found. So I'm like, maybe I left the wallet inside or something. And I drive home. I go inside to look 15 seconds later, maybe, maybe, maybe 16. Who's counting? A cop comes up knocks on my door and I'm like, Oh my God, thank God the cop got my wallet. Someone returned it. He goes, you're under arrest for, uh, for stolen identity. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like about to get cuffed. And my mom's like, my mom's like, what's going on here? He's like, is this your son? And she's like, yeah. He's like, He's posing as the, uh, he found my fake ID and my real ID. And in New Hampshire, they got, they have nothing going on. Okay. So real quick, New Hampshire, how old are you about? 
turning 21 in three months. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and then my mom begged the guy. He, she, she, the cop came inside, which is illegal. He didn't have and it a was just one, a warrant. one cop, just one yeah, cop. Okay. He came inside. So he's literally in our kitchen. And my mom's like, please, like, is there anything we can work out? Don't make a joke. Is there anything we can work out that w- won't get him arrested or in trouble? He plays basketball. He'll get kicked off his team, blah, blah, blah. He goes, yeah, cut the fake ID in front of me and make sure that I know that it's gone. And I literally go, no, you can't do that because at Mizzou, it's a bar school. Uh I'm like, I need this ID. And you think I'm joking and I'm not. I'm like, please, can we do anything else? This isn't even for here. Like, I don't sell drugs. I have a clean record. This is just so I can go to the bar after games. And he's like, bro, like basically like I can arrest you right now. Yeah. So my mom cut it in front and he left and I was like, that was so fucking annoying. That's not bad. I wa- he should have led with that. Well, he also broke all the rules. You can't just arrest someone with no warrant and come in their house. Mm-hmm. You can. Well, if you answer. If he had pulled you oh, over. Well, I did answer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you open the you open the door for the cop to enter your home. Well, he knocked, and I had to. Well, I didn't have. I okay. The door opened <laughs> outwards. So did I let him in, or was I pushing him away? Well, no, I mean. It gets gray here, but, you know, the state always wins. Yeah, that's true. That's true, but yeah, do, is it yeah. really the rule that if you just open the door? Well, I mean, if you open the door and you don't, and they and like they ask you to come in, if you let them in, they don't need a warrant. He didn't in. ask to come in. He didn't, he didn't. But um, he just tried to cuff you, right? He came in the house to cuff me. Hmm. Okay, that's, yeah, it's, that's gray. No, <laughs> no, that's wrong and illegal. And by the way, at the time, did you think to yourself... Like, you can't come in, or after the fact, you're like, he really shouldn't have come in. Well, the first thing that I said was when I opened the door, mm-hmm. I was like, do you have my wallet? I didn't say hi, and I and I didn't acknowledge, mm-hmm. like, that there's a cop here that I'm potentially in trouble. Yeah. And then he came forward without asking if he could come in. He yeah, just, that's not allowed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the state but wins, he, you're right. I say he'd probably still get away with it. So, yeah, anyways, nothing actually <clears throat> came of it. Um, but, but still, yeah. that is crazy. Yeah. He just made you poop your pants a little bit. Was yeah. the so you had your real license in there and the fake? Yeah. And what state was the fake from? Florida. Ah. Yeah. And you know what's funny? I still don't have my Florida license. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, uh, uh, Trevor's getting arrested come. next. No, I there don't are a lot of us. Don't. Yeah. Have you been pulled over since you've been down here? No. Okay. Well, actually, one time. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 one time that's, I did. That's wild. In yeah. Lake City. And I it was it, I was driving home from the from the show. It was really late, and the guy pulled me over. I had a tail light that was out, and I was going. I was actually I had already made an appointment, and he pulled me over. I'm like, dude, I'm a comedian. I'm just trying to get home. Like, can you just let me off? Like, I have an appointment for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. He like comes up and he goes, I'm giving you a warning, and I go, thank you. Here's my car. I'll get you a ticket if you ever come to a show. He's like, I can't take this, and I was <laughs> like, okay. It might have a bomb in it. <laughs> The card. Yeah, this yeah. is card. Do you think did his face light up when you said comedian, or do you think he cared at all? I've I okay, I don't think he cared at all. Not, I yeah. do think he, it made sense to him why I was out at, at that late at night trying to get home. That makes sense. Yeah, eat it like a lizard. I was uh, there's a fly. I know. You I saw know. It. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want anyone to see that and be like, "What the fuck was that?" That'd be yeah. cool if you ate that shit. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if it would have been cool, guys. <laughs> stop, stop telling me to eat bugs. A I giant think, fly, I think and it then been cool. not acknowledge it at all. We got a uh, when I was in Minnesota. He's not gonna. He doesn't it. care. At all. <laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about the fly. Yeah. But yeah, when I was in Minnesota, the guy who I was doing all the shows with, Ed Burroughs, Iowa comic, good guy, he got pulled over and got a ticket for uh, looking at his phone. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's not a that's not a law here. Yeah, they have a hands free law, and here's the other thing. So this guy is uh, he's in a wheelchair. So all of Ed? his driving, Ed is in a wheelchair. Oh. So all of his driving, he does with this thing that's attached to the steering wheel. And he was going to his PayPal so I could pay him for the show. And he just looked at it and then he put it down and what he didn't break. Heck? He didn't break any rules. Like yeah. he didn't run a red light. He wasn't speeding. And this young Minnesota officer pulled him over and then said, Hey, you were, you were looking at your phone through that light. Again, it was a green light. He didn't run it or anything. Yeah. He just saw the light in Ed's face. And then Ed did lie and say, yeah, I was typing in directions 
and the officer said, can you show me? So then he had to open up his phone. And, and, and no maps app no maps app which is too bad because i guess in hindsight while he was sitting there waiting for the officer to approach he could have gone to the maps app yeah so minnesotans or whoever's driving through minnesota keep that in mind or now, any nate's state. gonna educate us on the actual law what's up no that's not what i was gonna say i was gonna say if he didn't lie he would have probably been fine yeah other people have told me the same thing but this guy seemed he seemed like a real rules guy he seemed dead been. yeah he seemed dead set on giving us a ticket well cops are just there yeah. to protect banks and also like you know f- give you tickets to fund the fund the state like that's like I got my first ticket ever in Georgia, and I mean I was speeding. Like there was no denying it, but it's like they don't they don't give warnings. Like here in Florida, they really don't give warnings in Georgia unless you know you got some nice jugs, which I don't. Yeah. So, but you could the the quota is also real, by the way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like there's. Like, a I thought it was like a rumor, but it's yeah. real. Oh, that's how that's how like a lot of uh like some of those fines are the way that like the government gets like a good chunk of money is from like tickets. And I just wish those. they would do it to the people that actually deserve it. Like people that are like racing in Honda civics that are going 110 flying through traffic. Yeah. You're like those are the guys that should get pulled over. Not someone checking your phone. I was going 14 over, but I was at cruise control. So it was, I was control. Uh, the speed was controlled. It wasn't like me racing. How fast were you going? <laughs> 84 and a 70. It, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's still way too fast. It's <laughs> a lot. <laughs> In Florida, that's fifteen over. In that's Florida, a felony. An, that's in, actually a felony. In Florida, a cop won't even look at you unless you're going at least twenty five over. So I was. That's true, though. I was uneducated, but no, I mean, yeah. If you're in Georgia, Jesus Christ, I think go the fucking over is a felony though. No, it's not. In well, in Georgia, in New Hampshire, it could be. It is. Okay, in Florida, it's twenty five over is a felony. Ask me how I know. <laughs> how do you know? Because I got pulled over when I was a freshman in ROTC by oh a cop. My God. And the only reason he let me off is because I was going straight to OTC. Wow. And uh, yeah, he's like, hey, I can either give you a $500 ticket or you can give me your colonel's number and let me call him. So I just gave him my colonel's number because I was going to tell him anyway. Yeah. And then my colonel was like, yeah, it's unacceptable, you know, because he's fucking old and retarded. That's how he sounds. But yeah, he was just <laughs> like, uh, he's like, yeah, that's unacceptable. You can't drive that fast. I'm like, yeah, I know. And then. He was supposed to sit me down and like yell at me, and he never did. Right. Wow. So you got away with it. Yeah, I did. Oh my gosh. I, did you the, learn your lesson? Obviously not. Okay. Yeah. Are you talking about? No, back? I did. I did. I did. Yeah. Now I'm you're actually, only going I'm, 14 over. Well, I'm actually friends with that cop now. Wow. We've gotten dinner a bunch of times. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. No, he's a cool guy. How did that friendship come uh, about? Well, because he was genuinely looking out for me. He's like, because I told him I wanted to be an aviator, and he's like, well. You know, having a ticket on your record wouldn't look good, a civil involvement. And I'm like, no, it wouldn't. And then he was just like, Cause, <laughs> you know, he, he <laughs> it's funny to think about that and how much worse uh, I would end up, <laughs> how much like, worse. Wait you hear this podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No. Yeah. But he was just like, yeah, you know, because he, he was ex-Army. Like a lot of Florida cops are ex-military. So like mm-hmm. if you're like a young, especially like a, going to ROTC and you have aspirations of being in the military, which is dumb, by the way, you shouldn't want to do that. But, like, if you want to be in the military, they'll look out for you. So, who initiated the the first date, the first getting dinner? Me. Yeah? Yeah, well, because I called him one time. I was like, you know what, man? You did me a real solid. I appreciate you. Yeah? And you offered to take him out to dinner? He took me. That's nice. Wow. Because I, I, I thought maybe, do He's, you think you came off as a troubled youth? No, I mean, no? I... Okay. Because he, he asked if I had anything to drink, <laughs> and I'm like... Not once in my life, which was true at the time. When I was 18, I hadn't ever drank alcohol. I'm like, this guy. Yeah. This fake fucking, ID. Yeah. <laughs> Missouri. No, I mean, I'd never, I'd never been drunk in my life. So or I'd never even, like, <clears throat> I think I sipped wine once. But no, I, like, I'd never, I, I wasn't a druggie. I wasn't troubled at all. Like, I was actually kind of, like, I, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. But no, he was just like. You were just a speedster. He just, yeah, he just wanted to, yeah, he wanted to be a mentor for me. And we still talk every now and then. If Trevor had a son, and Trevor's son said to you, Uncle Nate, I'd love to join the military. <laughs> but, and then how would you say, so how would you say it to a nice 10-year-old boy, okay? I would say, so no First way. of all, I'm Auntie Nate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say, so first of all, my pronouns are they, them. Okay. This no, is but I would respectfully 15, tell him, like, listen, I understand you want to join the military. Maybe you want to kill a couple people. 
Yeah, well, you keep getting kids dead. You played yeah, Call of Duty a few stuff. times, and you're like, "Yeah, I could aim down the barrel and <laughs> get a triple kill, a quadruple kill, hit a predator drone on this innocent four year old Asian kid." I don't know. Uh-huh. Right, I was wrong country. I was, I was, country. I was wrong trying there, to, I was trying to like make you answer it in like a nice way by saying it was okay. a ten year old. It didn't help, but it's okay. Keep going. Here's the nice way I would say it. I'd say, "Listen, <laughs> I know what you what you're thinking." would come of this is like you serving the country that is not what you're doing you're not serving the country you're serving the needs of rich people who do not care about uh, about you or me or anybody like you they don't care about you and it, it used to be serving the country it is no longer that because a lot of the wars we are involved in have nothing to do with our freedom i would say like mm-hmm you would genuinely be better off serving your community locally than trying to partake in this farce that people say is serving the country. It's not. And then I would step in and say, listen, Chadwick, because that would be his name. <laughs> it's a good name. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'd say, listen, Chadwick, you don't ever listen to another man unless it's me or you're out of this fucking house. Do you understand? No music. So don't listen to what Uncle or Auntie Nate ever says again unless you want to go to the military against your will. No, I like that. Yes, I'll bitch. send you right to the Navy <laughs> so you could suck a dick your first day of basic training, you fucking loser. No, don't talk to my kid like that. Huh? Don't talk to my kid like that. That's no, my I kid. Already, I already did. Yeah, then you're not going to have a car. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You'll, you have a, you'll have a nice knife in it. What? Oh, yeah? Well, here's what I'll do. I'll drive away and you won't be able to follow me because you can't How fucking... How are you going to drive away with two flat tires and a knife in your front one? I'll find a way. I'll lift it up. Good luck. And then I'll go, that's what happens when you go to the military. You still want to be in the military? Yeah, nah, exactly. You should just give me a CT scan if you say that's what happens when you join the military. No, I'll, I'll just tell my kid. CTE without I'll getting punched. I'll tell my kid, listen to Uncle Fritz. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I would say to your, to young Chadwick, but I do think that uh, after Chad. after hearing what Chadwick. Nate... Chadwick. After hearing what Nate said, do you think you'd be more or less likely to bring him over for family dinner? Well, I liked Nate's first explanation first, honestly. <laughs> the what? The nice one about no, the not polite one. The not polite one. Yeah, you got to teach them how it is. The truth sets you free. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, killing is a part of being in the military, no doubt. What do you think? Would you want? Would you want Chadwick to join? I would not. No. no. I would oh, respectfully man. tell my little future boat boy son. I would say, listen, little boat boy junior. You will not be fighting or killing anyone. Do you understand? And he would go, yes. And I would go, good. Now go upstairs, play with, play with your, <laughs> your dolls. <laughs> play, play with, with your what? little boat shoes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> your size four boat shoes and go practice hitting on women. Okay, nice. Practice your PUA. <laughs> So you can become a pickup artist. You Slay say, pussy. Get on Twitter, follow these 10 accounts, <laughs> yeah. and become unstoppable. Follow Ye, and then that <laughs> meme Arizo guy. Follow dude. Red Pill, Andrew Tate, and also follow uh, Wall Street Bets. Now make me proud. <laughs> God, I love Wall Street Bets. Did you, did you know that women sometimes will keep the umbilical cord? That is psychotic. Jesus Christ. And the placenta. And, and they'll eat the placenta. Yeah. Yeah. That, you wouldn't want any of that? How can you just, yeah, that. That is like Jeffrey Dahmer, but women version. Would you drink breast milk? I'm uncomfortable. Would I drink breast milk? Uh, what's the bet? Well, would I, I would. Lose? I would. Just no, you wouldn't lose anything just for the nutrients. I oh, would. just because? Yeah, yeah. No, what are no? you, tapped? I would do it, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll end up trying well, only it Only if day. it comes right out of a girl's tit. Yeah. Oh my God, Dude. you're just going to go home and... Poor Lucky Charms and drink it. They I mean, sell it on. I would love to s- suck milk out of a girl's tit. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. No, We're of course, here. of course. But uh, oh yeah, sorry. The TV clean fucking podcast here. No, that My is. Bad. Of course, we would like to get it that way. But I even mean. <laughs> This is crazy. I don't know if this says more about my algorithm, and I I really don't talk about this out loud or spend much time thinking about it, but my Facebook marketplace has shown me women sell their breast milk, and it's popped up on my Facebook marketplace. That is insane. Yeah. Well, it's super nutritious. It's like raw milk, like closer to raw milk than pasteurized milk. Yeah. Who needs? I mean, no, it's it's absolutely raw. Yeah, that's so insane to me, though. 
<laughs> like they're just bottling it up and dr- giving it to who, who even knows if a baby's getting it. Yeah, I'd rather. Give oh, my ba- I'd rather give my baby the same woman's bath water instead of that milk. That's terrible. Also, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? Are you being okay? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had raw cow's milk? I've had kefir. It's good, but that's it. Raw cow milk is actually pretty fucking good. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, because I hate, like, regular dairy. Like, my body doesn't respond well to it. But, like, raw cow milk, I actually, my body responds well to. Yeah. It tastes good. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got a fuller taste. I mean, it's like whole yeah. milk and then to another level. Yeah. Oh, nice. Certainly. It's just straight from the udder. I wonder if your algorithm, so, this is going to sound so stupid, but I'm being dead serious, saw your engagement photos and then automatically determined... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to have a kid soon. Let's start the process. Or even a kid's on the way. He's getting engaged so that... No, 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 oh no. Oh, my God. I'm like, that's crazy. No, but... It'll be a wild gender reveal on this It's going to be a beautiful <laughs> black baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that, that could be it. Um, I don't know if it happened before or after the engagement, but I'll say if... I've seen videos of dudes trying breast milk that wasn't their... That didn't belong to their wife. Yeah. That's got to be crazy. Yeah. I feel like it's good. I mean, no, it's nutritious. I get why people do it, but like then for what? They're just going to go to KFC after? Or they'll continue to eat healthy. It doesn't have to, they don't have to go to KFC. (laughs) I guess, but like everyone does. Do you like cow's milk? Yes. And do you, somehow it's become normal to drink the cow's milk, but human milk. Joaquin that's Phoenix. It's so weird. No, that's a good, it is kind of. That's a good point. I'm well, not trying to just be a, a smart ass, but Joaquin Phoenix would hate this conversation. It, why? Because uh, he like is super vegan. Ah, gotcha. He loves all. Well, he might. He thinks people who drink milk should be killed. Yeah, it's out there. But he, I wonder what his take <laughs> would be. I wonder what his take would be on breast milk. I I have no idea. He'd probably be pro pro breast milk. He might be pro. He and me and Joaquin might be together on this one. You know? yeah. I'd never eat a placenta though. That that's no thanks. I eat raw liver sometimes. I've done it before. Have you? Liver yeah. King. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know. When I first started eating it, didn't know you could only have tiny pieces. And the first time I had it, I ate a half pound of liver. Oh my gosh! I just eat chicken yeah. and. Did steak. it go right through you? Yeah. 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 I I just eat chicken and steak. I know you have to stay lean, huh? For jujitsu. What's the most interesting thing about you? About me? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a crazy question. I think it's a good one. <clears throat> What's the most interesting thing about me? Do you have a stock answer to that stock question? You should have said, where do I start? It's not a stock question. I, the reason is, you look bored with what I was saying. No, and no, then no. I said, and then I turned <laughs> the tables and said, well, why don't we talk about something interesting, like the most interesting thing about Fritz, so that we can get to know him a little bit better? I think I know what the most interesting thing is, but go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, right. okay. Thank so you. I think this guy is a revisionist. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what? He's a, well, he's a denier, Holocaust denier. Uh, actually, on that topic, <laughs> I will. No, I'll just say oh this. Oh boy, here we go. The uh, I had this thought that Holocaust denial, very, very bad. Yeah. Just about <laughs> as bad as it gets. But can I just say one thing? But not as Everyone bad. Everyone that gets triggered about it, we yeah. weren't even there. So like, just shut up. All I'll say is not as. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I don't have that take. I think that's I'm Jewish, horribly so disrespectful. My, he thinks it my, happened. He just thinks the numbers are my off. My family members would still be here if it was fake. So. <laughs> the, uh, the numbers are off. That's his opinion. I just think all I'll say is this. I think a Holocaust denier is just a touch better than a Holocaust enthusiast. Because at least, <laughs> at least the denier, di- you know, he thinks it didn't happen. And so he's like, uh, yeah, Hitler wasn't as bad. The enthusiast. Thinks it happened, but is happy about and it. And goes triple platinum. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's my only take on that subject. <laughs> and releases Yeezus. <laughs> okay, objectively, I think the most interesting thing about me is there's two that I can't decide. I let the people decide. When I was five years old, do you know who Elion Gonzalez, Elion Gonzalez is? No. He's a Cuban... He's a little Cuban boy who was trying to get to America with his, with his mom and his dad mm-hmm. on, a sh- on a boat. And their boat crashed during... This was like at the height of like Bush and uh, Castro and, and all those things going on. And 
his mom died and drowned in the ocean. Apparently his, apparently Elion was out at sea and literally this is the story that he somehow got to shore miles and miles away. So people think like dolphins took him or something crazy. There's no physical explanation for how he got there. Anyways, it was a huge deal because there was immigration policies going on between Cuba and, uh, and, and the Ameri- uh, United States that they couldn't work out. Mm-hmm. During the height of all that, Elion Gonzalez went to Disney World at the same time that I was there. And my dad recognized, I was like five years old. He was 5'2". My dad recognized it was Elion Gonzalez, and he told me to go over and shake his hand. So it's like an American little white boy shaking a Cuban little boy's hand. And it was like a huge photo op for news people that were there. I didn't know news people were there, but for like, uh, I did a bunch of interviews on it. And it, he was a huge deal in America for, for like a year and a half. And there were photos of you shaking his hand. Yeah. That's I'm pretty cool. Kid. Yeah. So if you that's find those good. photos, that's, yeah. The second thing is that I went to a, a boarding school for basketball, but there were kids from like, there were kids from like 42 different countries. So I learned a lot about di- different parts of the world and met a bunch of crazy people and cool people. And yeah. Real global stories from before you for both of them, right? I would say if I had to say, I mean, you know, in March madness, but I'm, I'm talking about things that I think are, are genuinely interesting and have a cool shelf life. Yeah. Where was the boarding school? New Hampshire. Ah. New Hampton school. Shout out New Hampton Huskies. Damn. Oh, it's this. That was the devil. This is the Huskies. That's the Huskies? Yeah. No, that is, those are good answers um, for most interesting. It's a hell of a question, you know? But it's something to think about. It really is. Yeah. You're talking to me as if you're, you're like given, it's good. It's good advice. No, it's I like, mean, young I man. I think about it until you just told me. Yeah. You're like, young yeah. man, you should really have an answer to that question. It's like uh, one of those job interview questions that you should have an answer for. You know? I, I think two. I, two what? Most interesting thing? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look at what, look at what you started. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Well, my first one is that um, I was a trumpet soloist to Carnegie Hall when I was 17 years old. And uh, I played for seven years to, to get to that point. And I had a great performance. <clears throat> in, in the city I love, mm-hmm. and the second most interesting thing about me is I, uh, I am one of the only lieutenants to ever get kicked out of the Air Force the way I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only, That's I'm good. the only lieutenant to ever be kicked out as a comedian for a podcast. You're one of that one. makes sense. I'm the only one. That's that is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. One of one anything is pretty interesting. And I and I don't regret it. Yeah. I'm happy it happened. You should uh, email all the other lieutenants and tell them to start podcasts <laughs> <laughs> and say wild shit. I'll produce it for them. Yeah. No, that's cool. Well, also, I'm, I'm self-employed. That's pretty cool. I agree. No. Fritz. Thanks for playing. I know you had to. Thanks for playing. I know you thought of something. Yeah, come on, Fritz. Dude, I really didn't. I don't know. Um, You're a well-traveled man. This guy shit standing up. Come on, you got tons see. of of experience. You guys are gonna make me cry because <laughs> I can't think of no, no, I don't know. I, 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 you know what I would like to do to answer this question? Yeah. Oh boy. I would get together my closest, my closest friends and family. Okay. You know, and then I'd yeah. be like, "What do you guys think?" Is because it's. When you say stuff about yourself, which you guys both just did, mm-hmm. come off a little like a uh, you know, a little self-absorbed. Well, it was in the context <laughs> of the kidding, question. Kidding. <laughs> no, you're right. That would be I maniacal love... if I was just telling people that. Nothing I love more than vanity. Yeah. Yeah, and no, you guys both have... Wait, I'm sorry. Did you not go to boarding school? <laughs> no, <laughs> Fucking bitch. Did. Yeah, I did. I went, to, uh, I went to an academy until I was 11. Um, you know, and we... I did create, this is the only, this will be my answer for now. When I was in fifth grade, there were 15 boys in our class. And we would play football every single recess. And I took it upon myself to create the HFFFL, which is the Holy Family Fifth Grade Football League. And we had a full draft. So we had three teams (laughs) of five. And then those were the teams every single recess that year. And we kept track of all of our records. And I still have my uh, playbook that I put together for my team. We were the Colts. 
Of course you were. So that's yeah. Back back then, I think I was like a Peyton Manning yeah. bandwagon young guy. Horse. Yeah. Yeah. So young I horse. I like that that story. So yeah, in fifth grade, I I formalized what might have just been a fun recess activity, turned it into a a league. It's very entrepreneurial of you. Yeah, I charge league fees from the parents. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Like, you're a genius. <laughs> no, it was all for love of the, love of the game. And uh, in uh, the only other thing is in the academy, everyone had to wear a suit and tie. So it was kind of, it was a slightly fancy yeah, Okay, school. nice. Actually, it really wasn't okay. that fancy. It was just Catholic. No, but um, we played tackle football in suits and ties. You know? That's that. We I mean, took off the jackets. Fire. It's incredibly impractical. We <laughs> took off the jackets, of course. But, yeah, I mean, we still were in, you know, somewhat dress shoes. Most of us were still wearing ties. If you had a clip on, you probably took it off. But I do like the idea of someone driving past and seeing, uh, yeah, a bunch of fifth graders tackling each other in suits. I think you're how good of an idea that is. Well, it happened. What do you mean? No, I'm saying, like, I think... Like, that would have been one of the top five things I thought of if someone asked me, like, what the most interesting thing is. You started a shirt and tie football league. Well, yes, that's uh, one way to put it. And then, all right, th- this will be... That's epic. This, and then I created another football league in uh, high school. <laughs> <laughs> Shirts and skins. No, but uh, this is this is uh, interesting. We What we did is we painted my buddy's backyard, okay? So it was just backyard football. Anytime people just want to like play pick up basketball or play football or something, I want to make it extremely formal. So we put we uh, painted the backyard, we got PVC pipe and we made it a, we made the goalposts out of that. And then we filmed, we would play like a two on two tournament and we would film the games for the, the semifinals and the finals and then upload highlights. We would ca- keep track of all the statistics. And then at the end of the year, there was an awards show and someone, it was called, we called it small ball. And instead of winning the Heisman, someone would win the Smeisman. So that's what the, the best player wow. in the league would win. The and Smeisman trophy. The Smeisman Damn. trophy. And the funny, I don't know, one nice thing about this is the uh, the local newspaper did do a write-up on our league. Okay, getting some press. So nice, we were 17-year-olds. Nice, nice. Roger Goodell shitting bricks. Yeah. <laughs> so those are That's sort of different cool, things. Dude. Yeah, just creating football leagues. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I so. think that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's something. The HFFFL and uh, small ball. And small ball videos are still available online. <laughs> nice. So that's interesting. Yeah, and that's actually, cool. my buddy who just got married last year, his best man brought up small ball in his uh, in a speech. You gotta charge a, a patent. For you. Well, I didn't. So I did not create the game. I was merely the president. Oh. So two other guys were the inventors. They were the Abner Double Days of small ball. Nice. But they brought. But again, it was at that point. It was just guys spray painting their backyard with some PVC. But when I got in, statistics, standing, Smeisman award ceremony, <laughs> video highlights. So anyway, that's legit. That's my answer to your question about most interesting. Um, nice. You should just say you're in the Smeisman Hall of Fame. Yeah, the Small Ball Hall of Fame for sure. We even did an alumni tournament, and then I'll. Do you want to go? I was gonna say I'm in the Small Ball Hall of Fame too. Yeah, you are. And uh, you could never do my joke about the heavy balls, but the. Oh, no, I was talking about Cooperstown, but yeah. Nice. The uh, we did an alumni tournament for uh, for the Small Ball, and the baseball coach let us paint the outfield of the baseball field and turn on the lights. So we had a probably 32, maybe 60 person tournament. Um, anyway, this is all That's just legit. Yeah. There are, there are photos and videos online still. And if, if I'd done it again, what I would have done, okay. As some sort of business proposition is you would sell a kit to other kids so that they could do it themselves and be the stars. Uh, Cause what we did, that. well, just cause what we did is we were like, we're going to videotape ourselves. And then we did put videos out and we were, we're trying to get like, we we're trying to spread the game. And at one point these kids from Vermont did message us and tell us that uh, they're like, Hey, what are the rules? How do we do this? So the game of small ball did spread from Iowa to Vermont, 
But yeah, the way to do it to actually spread it. That's interesting, dude. That is right. But the way to spread it would have been to make other people the stars. Like we we wanted to be the stars. You know, we were videotaping yeah. ourselves. The way to do it would have been like, hey, we'll set up a small ball league for you. And uh, we did have feeder leagues into the main league. So like, you know, there was uh, anyway, there were <laughs> the small ball minor the bitch league. Made yeah. No, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh my god. There were, bitch made league. And we didn't create that. It was just like we were, you know, juniors. So then the ninth graders had a small ball league and then the you know probably the seventh and eighth graders had a small ball league as well but uh it you, doesn't you guys ahead. should do a tiktok account yeah this was before tiktok i'm uh you know just bring it back a generational gap oh, but shit. um but yeah that, that it does make me smile to look back on how much time i spent on being the president of small ball that's legit And then you hear people say it's nothing at all. And then you hear other people say it's uh, you know going to give you cancer. Well, you just got to accept you're going to get cancer at some point in time from food or radiation or 5G or well, you, you know what flying else? a leech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know what else has a lot of radiation? A nuclear bomb. But we still have those. Yeah, we do. But no, uh, it's so fucking dumb. No, the, I don't know. All the radiation shit, I think it's like overblown, man. I don't know. You might just be addicted to your headphones. I rarely use them, so I try not to keep my phone near my nuts or wear headphones. But obviously, there's all sorts of stuff radiating. Yeah, those huge giant nuts. You should probably shrink them. That's how they got so big. Yeah, (laughs) from the just. I wonder why Ron said that. That you got a huge sack. He wasn't kidding. No, I mean. I feel like I've been showing it off this whole stupid episode. I need to start wearing. Call him Fritz Speedbag Wagner. Yeah, I need to start wearing pants on this stupid uh, podcast. But I like how casual the shorts are. Meanwhile, my nuts are, uh, you know, right in the camera. I saw you look down earlier, and then, and then yeah. eyebrows. Like, <laughs> nice. That's, that's why like I, I need to fix it. That's why I wear slim cut jeans. So I give the ladies a little bit of foreshadowing. You know. Yeah, I uh, I was wearing slim cut jeans when I got pulled over, <laughs> 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 and the cop made fun of me for it. But all right, boys. Uh, I'll cut this one part out, but you guys, anything else you want to, we're at time, but we can keep talking oh, if you want. Okay. Well, it's your house. We're at this point, we're trespassing. No, no, yeah. you're good. But yeah. Anything I mean, else you want to get off? I mean, Thanks. That was a good question, by the way. I got to talk about my bullshit. I'm going to cut out the part where I'm like, I don't know what to say. But <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know.
what are you, uh, I hadn't thought of the Holy Family fifth grade football league in a while. Do you have any questions for us? Can I tell you one? Thanks story? for coming, guys. I mean, I did, thank it's you. It's not a question. I know, but no, I not really. I asked what I wanted to ask, and uh, check out Nate Roscoe on YouTube, please. Thank you, brother. This is gonna. You're helping me. It's not the <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> what's What's your handle? Uh, well, no, I don't. You don't need to help me, but yeah, Fritz J Wagner. But like, uh, please follow Fritz J Wagner and check out that beautiful mug shot of his. All right, now you plug mine. Follow. Uh, what is at it? The Trevor Glassman. At the Trevor Glassman. Oh uh, yeah. On every on all things except for Twitter. Yeah, I don't have Twitter. I deleted it. Yeah. If you have yeah. Twitter, you should be publicly executed. <laughs> I was just telling Trevor how much I love Twitter. Yeah. It's the shittiest app on the planet. I don't care that Elon owns it. If you use it, you should still die. That's well, awful. Fritz, duck and cover, buddy. Yeah, that's that. But All right, sounds good. Fritz Thanks, is boys. getting heel hooked. No, I'm kidding. <laughs>